Welcome to the wood shop. This is the obese bee man. You've heard about bee men that are uh, carrying a few extra pounds in the past, I'm sure. Uh, well, you can't get away from it. Uh, I am the authentic obese bee man. So, welcome to the wood shop. We're building lids today. Uh, you're not really here to see my ugly face, so I'm not going to be too careful about framing my mug in this camera. So, what you want to see is is over here. So it's not not here, it's over here. So in my beekeeping I've decided to go with what's called a migratory cover. I'm running about 100 hives right now, I want to expand a bit. In my beekeeping I run two-way pallets so that means I really need to run migratory covers which have no hover part like a like a telescoping cover does. So this is what I'm building here today. This is a nuke. This is a five frame nuke cover. I've got a two inch feed hole here. There's a little plastic plug that goes in there to uh, keep the rain out when I'm not feeding. So this is pretty straightforward. I've got a two inch cleat on here and a two inch cleat on here. I run a, I run a, a rabbit on this cleat here just to increase the surface area for gluing that in there. And I also have a half inch shim around the the inside here you can kind of see that that half inch thick well three quarter wide the width of this is really irrelevant um, half inch deep that's just when you put a pollen patty or something on top of your frames they've got a little inset there for uh, the pollen patty they will build some comb here of course you know half inch you're violating bee space plus the uh, uh, what is it three sixteenths or so that the frames are set down. So you will get a little bit of comb there. That's not a big deal. Scrape that off, no problem. So anyway, that's a five frame cover. That cover that's uh, already built, That's a, it's wax dipped. So it uh, should last a long time. These are new, they're not dipped yet. This is a, a standard 10 frame Langstroth cover, uh, ready to be dipped. And it also build six frame nuke covers. Uh, so they're just, you know, exactly the same, varying widths, no problems. So, this is the basis for the five frame. So for the five frames, we start with the uh, three quarter inch plywood, tough size. Of course, you're going to have to determine your dimensions. It's not very hard enough if you really think about it. Um, I'm kind of fussy, so I... You know, that side to me looks better than this side, a couple knots, so I start with the, the top of the cover down. These are my end cleats, and again, I've milled those with that little, that little rabbit. I want to say dado, but that's a rabbit. Silly rabbit. So, glue, the ultimate glue, type bond 3, it's uh, waterproof. These are out in the elements. It's also uh, food safe for indirect food contact, contact, they say. I don't know the parameters of that, but that's how they say it. So, just run a couple of little glue beads on there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And I match it up. I'm going to flush this to one, one edge right there. And then nail it off. Okay. I'm going to flush this one. I like to work right-handed, so I just turn it around. Uh, flush this one to the same side. That's flush. This is flush. The reason I do that is these are all cut. All these pieces are cut very slightly oversized, a sixteenth of an inch, if that. So I flush everything this side, push everything to that side, kind of ragged. You know, you can see that that's a little wider than the plywood. So. When I'm done, I just run it through the table saw here, cuts that perfectly to size, and makes a really nice finished uh, finished edge on on the cover. So that's it for under there for now. Keeping in mind my flush edge is here. Uh, then I'm going to grab my next two little pieces. They're identical, but they're plain. No rabbits, as we know. Rabbits are silly. I glue everything, and I tend to use too much glue sometimes. Oh well. What are you going to do, right? Yeah, use a glue brush. I just find it's really slow. I use a glue brush when I do my frames. 
but when I do this, I just find my finger actually is a more appropriate tool for doing a fast job. Do not get this glue on you. If you get that glue on your clothes, you need to wash it out right away because it is water soluble before it sets. Flush edge on this side, just make sure you can see that. I'm gonna flush that up as best I can. Don't bother looking at it, touch it with your fingers. Your fingers can see more than your eyes can. Hopefully I don't blow out any nails during my video, but sometimes that happens. Turn that around again, keeping in mind my flush edge is now there. And we'll go with this piece. You notice, you notice that just before I pull the trigger, I move my fingers? Nail blows out that side by cracky. It hurts and you'll have blood everywhere. Don't get blood on the workpiece. Okay, so the top is pretty well done. Uh, so we uh, concentrate on the bottom now. And because this peak here, there's really nothing, you know, it's nailed here, but there's nothing holding that cleat to the plywood here. So sometimes it actually doesn't fit as well as what you see here. So I run some screws. I run a few screws. An inch and a quarter screws because we have a three quarter inch board, we have three quarter inch plywood, an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter, we've got space to spare. But you knew that. By the way, I didn't mention these little nails. That's a 16 gauge nail, uh, inch and a half, so three quarter and three quarter, so it's about that long. Um, whatever. The nails are really there to clamp until the glue sets. So now we're going to put on that little shim underneath. Again, I love to glue things, so because it works well, right? You don't want your equipment falling apart. You're working in the bee yard, you take a lid off, you kind of stress it a little bit, or throw it on the ground, or falls off of the truck, or whatever, and then it smashes in a million pieces, and then what do you have? Now you don't have a cover for that hive. It's not so bad that you don't have a cover, but now you don't have a cover for that hive. Uh, I've got a narrow crown staple here, quarter inch wide, it's an inch long. So again, we got half inch, three quarters, so that's inch and a quarter. Got a little bit of leeway there. I almost kind of started the wrong side. I want to start on this side again because that's my flush side. I'll flush that up nicely with my fingers. So nail in the ends. Don't go too close to the end, you'll split that little piece of wood. Okay, and now my little tiny pieces that go right in. Here. You hit those screws sometimes, your staples won't go in very well, so don't hit the screws. That's kind of, you don't need four, but if I put three in, I'd be probably trying to staple the same place that screw is, and I'd likely hit the screw more often than not. Oddly enough, you hit that screw to save your life, you'd never hit it, but you know, if you don't want to hit it, then you're gonna. And in. If this is bold any, you can kind of finesse it at that point. That's pretty much it. Uh, there's two other little things I like to do, but I need to let the glue dry. So I just sort of wipe off what's... If there's any glue around in here, don't bother with that. This flush side, however, make sure there's no glue on that flush side, because that's where your fence runs. And I'll tell you that it's nice and even. Everything is just lined up perfectly there. So that'll make a really nice cover. Uh, I'll take my little uh, Bosch router. I'll show you here. Once I once I uh, size this in the table saw, 
you see how that that end there is not I don't know if you can see that it's not flush so that's the side I'm going to be running to the table so just smooth that up real nice I've got a little I think it's a quarter inch round over bit in my little router here I'm just going to ease some of these edges when I'm done. I'll ease this inside edge, the outside. I'll actually go all the way along here. I'll go all the way around this cleat. Makes it look nice. Makes it handle really nice. I'll actually go around this feed hole under here, but not on top because you need that tight fit for that plug to make sure that, that stays in. Uh, it, it just it makes it look nice and handle nice. The only real advantage mechanically to this is by easing this corner. If you go to put this on a box, these fit pretty tightly on the box. If you go put that on the box, things are a little bit tighter than maybe they sometimes are. It's difficult to get that sharp edge to begin to slide down over that box. If it's rounded, it's a much easier job. And that, as they say, is that.